Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, uh, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon uh, Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nino, and we welcome you, our viewer, to our new season of 2019 shows where we feature local artisans and craftspeople here in Southern Oregon. And we talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art and their art process, and what drives them to work uh, in, as, as artists. So today we explore the art of fashion design, and we have the privilege of featuring local fashion designer, Joanne Manzone. I discovered Joanne Manzone while visiting the Ashland Art Center. I found it exciting to learn that there was local fashion designers as I've uh, been wanting to explore fashion design on the show as an art form. And to help me out, uh, being that I'm a guy, uh, and to explore <laughs> and talk about fashion design, I've had the honor of having my friend and fellow RVTV producer, Nancy Bloom, at, with me as my guest co-host uh, for today's show as we talk to Joanne about fashion. And so today, I'm pleased to talk to Joanne Manzone about her life as an artist and the work that she pursues today with her art. And so we welcome Joanne to our show and to thank Nancy for being as my guest co-host. So thank you, thank, Nancy. Thank you and for having welcome me. welcome to the show, Joanne. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So this is something I've been wanting to explore for a long time. And uh, so I'm excited to, to be able to uh, explore that, uh, the world of fashion design with you. And to begin with, uh, what uh, we want to find out, uh, how long have you been doing your work as a fashion designer, and what kind of brought you into doing the work that you do? Well, ever since I was a little girl, my, um, my mother was a knitter, my grandmother was a knitter, and they introduced me to knitting at a very young age. And I can remember just being really excited about wanting to learn how to knit and be one of the grown-up women in my family that knitted. And so I can remember my first trip to the yarn store and picking out my first project and just really falling in love with fabric mm -hmm. and working with fabric. And so I've done something, hand, some kind of handwork, either sewing or knitting for pretty much since I was eight or nine years old. And um, my career path took me down a different road when I was getting ready to go to college. My parents didn't really want me to major in fashion design because they felt like I wouldn't be able to make any money doing that. <laughs> okay. So I took a degree in psychology and I worked for about 20 years in the addiction field. But I always had my, um, my knitting and my sewing along with me and it was a way to um, help me relax and to stretch my creative wings a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when my husband and I moved to Ashland uh, about 15 years ago, I said, no more. I just want to focus on my passion yeah. of design. So I started working with, um, I started working out still with knitting, but then I was introduced to a process called felting and specifically a process called Nuno felting, which is felting on silk. Okay. Mm. And um, I just loved combining two different fabrics together, the wool and the silk, to create different, uh, a, a totally new fabric. Yeah, right. And as you can see, Nancy is wearing uh, one of my pieces, and that piece is felted on a piece of sari silk. Really? And felted means that the top part that's soft is the wool? Yes. And then the underneath is the silk? Correct. Wow. So when you put the two fibers together and you wet it and you rub it and you roll it, the wool migrates into the silk. And so then it creates a whole new piece of fabric. And I have to say, it's very soft and pleasing to touch. And I wonder if the control room could pull up more of a close up on it. Yeah. We'll see. There. Yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful. It is. Yeah. So I started off doing mostly silks and uh, I mean scarves and wraps and then I, um, I moved into more sewing and hand stitching and making clothing. So a couple of pieces you see here, that piece here, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, vest there is Let's pull felted up a on a of this. base layer of silk and then it is um, naturally dyed in madrone bark. 
Oh my and goodness. then printed with eucalyptus leaves. Wow. Oh my goodness. And how do you print the eucalyptus leaves on it? The actual leaves? You... I use the actual leaf and the tannin from the leaf makes an imprint on the fabric. Uh -huh. And I don't know if we can get a close yeah. up of this, but yeah. maybe over here by me. Yeah, so so you're really, I mean, you're making use of, of, uh, of natural uh, uh, natural, biological, botanical kinds of materials Yes. as part of the design process. Yes, yes. I love to work with natural fibers. I work primarily with silks, uh, linens, some other cottons, but I love to work with silk. And then um, whenever possible, I will naturally dye the fabric, and then I will print with leaves or do some mm -hmm. other kinds of surface design and stitching mm -hmm. on the pieces so that I create unique yeah. one-of-a-kind garments. Right. Yeah, now what's, what, what, in terms of time involved, what's that time involved in making that, like, you know, if you're, if you're taking like leaves or some uh, uh, botanical material like that and incorporating it into that transfer process, I mean, what, how long does that kind of a process take? Well, the, first of all, for example, with that piece was felted first. So the felting process to make that garment it usually takes me a day to make the fabric. Okay. And then a day to sew it together. And then a day to dye it and print it. So about and, three days. Mm -hmm. And when you say felting it, can you explain what felting is? Yes. Well, there are a variety of different ways to felt, but the way I felt is I lay my base layer of silk out on a surface, and then I lay my wool. I use what's called wool roving, mm. and it comes in a sliver. Mm -hmm. And so you pull pieces of the wool off and you lay it down on the silk. So it's like webbing, very, very slim. Yes, very thin layers of wool. And then you wet it with soapy water and you lightly rub it and roll it uh -huh. until it starts to migrate into the silk. And then wow. you continue to work it until it's totally gone into the silk and created one piece of fabric. So wow. it's very labor intensive and time consuming. And do you, do you, as you're doing that, do you feel a sense of love for those two fabrics Absolutely. coming together? I got that yeah. feeling from you. Yes, I do. I, I'm very hands on. I just love the feel of putting my hands on a piece of fabric mm. and, and turning it into something new. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I like that you're, you, you've got a method by which you're really creating unique uh, uh, fabric of your own. Mm -hmm for each design piece of clothing that you're doing. Yes. Mm. And, you know, you're just not like going out and finding a source of, of pre-made uh, material and then just kind of designing a piece around that. I mean, you're right. really creating your own material. Yes, for the most part mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And then I love combining materials too. Like this vest, for example, yeah. is a combination of uh, fabric pieces that I had and pieces of felt that I made. Mm. So I like envisioning how I'm going to place these pieces together to make a new piece of fabric and then create a garment. From yeah. It. And one of the things I, that I've always noticed about your work when I've visited the Ashland Art Center and seen examples of your work is that, like, like this piece particularly behind you, I mean, it, it gives a sculptural feel mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to the fashion because you've got layers of materials that are to be seen and that are kind of uh, free flowing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And and so it, it's, I've always thought that looks sculptural every time I see some of those yeah. pieces of yours. Yeah, thank you. Funny, that yeah. was a, a, a word that came to me as I looked at your designs online. I was like, sculptural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't even know the half of it. I didn't know all this layering and. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, from the outset, as you started to, to do this, I mean, was that kind of like an idea that that was like there from the beginning, or is that like kind of been part of your development process as a fashion designer? Well, um, you know, I started off with, of course you have to learn the process. Mm -hmm. I didn't develop the process, mm -hmm. so I learned it. And then, um, you know, I've picked up pieces from what other people are doing and then I started thinking about okay how can I incorporate that into my own design so 
For several years now, I've been more interested in creating the fabric. How can I make mm. this fabric my own? And mm. then from there, I'll create a garment. Yeah. Now, um, uh, in the course of, uh, of your work, I mean, it, it sounds like you're really kind of like in a constant uh, development process of creating all these new fabrics. Yes. So, I mean, is it, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I just have it in my mind that you've, like, in the course of a year, you're really kind of creating a whole bunch of unique uh, fabric materials. But when you're, uh, you know, when I think of fabric and, like, buying fabric at a fabric store, I mean, mm -hmm. you're buying, you're producing, you're buying, like, you know, you can buy, like, a bolt of fabric. But I'm, my interpretation of what you're doing tells me that, I'm thinking that you're creating like small batches of, of fabric and that uh, and I wonder is it possible that you're able to uh, to reproduce the same kind of a fabric or is it always slightly different even if you're using the same materials? It's always slightly different mm -hmm. even right. though I'm using the same materials and I intentionally want it to be slightly different right. because I don't want to mass produce any of my pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. When you go to produce these materials, is it partly because you suddenly have an inspiration of, oh, I want to work in the blue octaves right now, or then I see, I see in my mind a thing of vests that would have leaf designs. I mean, is it like that, or the, the fabrics just come with their own inspiration, then you find where they want to go? Normally the fabrics come first uh -huh. and without an idea of a finished product. Beautiful. So, and mm. yeah, and then I um, sometimes I'll put a piece aside for a month, a year, mm. if I'm not sure what I want to do with it, mm. or I'll hang it on my design board if I'm thinking, well, it needs something else to go with it. Mm. And, um, and then all of a sudden, you know, it comes to me, oh, I mm. think I can, I, let me try this. Wow. So are there like times when you're, uh, when you get into like kind of like uh, uh, a phase of exploring a theme idea and it takes you for like a long stretch of time? Uh, like, you know, artists, you know, have like blue phases or red phases where they do some mm -hmm. kind of a, an idea that might be color based or some other idea and they just like kind of like explore it for a long period of time until they kind of feel like they've reached the max. Does that, so is that something that kind of happens with you in this process? It does. Sometimes it does. Like, um, last year, I went to a retreat in Taos, New Mexico, mm. and uh, I created some really beautiful pieces mm. from pieces of fabric from that retreat. Mm. And I stayed with that design for a while, and I made a few garments, but I still have plenty of pieces left over that I haven't touched yet. And I'm just mm. starting now to think about, okay, I'd like to get back to that and, yeah. and, and take it a little further. But I don't always take it to a point and then say, okay, I'm done with it. Sometimes mm. I'll go back and, and play some more. Right, yeah. Gosh. Well, I mean, it's a, uh, it's, it's a fascinating uh, uh, process that you that you're that you're going through to create mm -hmm. uh, your pieces. I mean, it just I just knew from when I when I discovered your work that there's like gotta be a really great story here, <laughs> you Thank know, you. which yeah. is why you're here yeah. on the show. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I love the word you use, play. That it, yeah. there's an element of play in it, a big there, element. There is a big element yeah. of play, and and I allow myself to play because when I play, something wonderful comes out of it. Well, yeah, because generally, you know, in a uh, whether no matter what you're doing in life, if you're in a relaxed, playful mindset, right? I mean, you're you've got a more positive energy that's coming through, uh, and and typically allows for more open, creative uh, thought process mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're doing. And so, if you're enjoying what you're doing, loving what you're doing, and and can really uh, uh, apply that to whatever creative thing that you're doing, then certainly that's got to uh, greatly enhance and affect uh, your creativity and what the end result winds up being. Mm -hmm. It does. And 
I'm not really a trained sewer either, so wow. I've been kind of new to sewing. Mm. I think I made a blouse for myself when I was in home ec back in high school, but uh, that's another fascinating uh, journey for me because I, sometimes I don't know how to do things traditionally, mm -hmm. like how people who sew are taught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really get to explore and see, well, what if I did this? How mm -hmm. would that look? Yeah. And so some of these pieces are put together like that. Like, how do I make a buttonhole without, you know, having to get on my sewing mm -hmm. machine and put the uh, buttonhole piece on there to actually make a buttonhole the way a sewer would. And I find that when I do that, I can come up with some really interesting oh, ways to do things. Great, that you just sort of keep inventing. And yes. Yeah, well, that also makes it a little bit easier to break the rules, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that always allows for more uh, unique things to develop. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to be kind of good at all things, but never be a master of one, because if you get to be a master of one thing, then it's hard to kind of break rules. Right, right. And I think that would be kind of boring for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to do what, uh, what kind of keeps the juices flowing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, you know, and like I say, the thing that I just keep uh, uh, that just keeps capturing my my focus is how uh, the, that idea of of your layers and sculptural uh, effects mm -hmm. uh, to the clothing because it's really not something that I really have ever seen much of uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm always striving to m make my work look different or grow. Um, when you learn a technique, you learn a specific way of doing things, mm -hmm. and then when you look around, you see everyone who's learned that technique is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And yeah, I see even the pieces you came are each so unique. Mm -hmm. They're their own selves. And this one I was noticing, there's stitching quite obvious on the front, and you intentionally put that, and that yes. creates another design element, another yes. textural element. I really enjoy hand stitching, and some of my garments are totally hand stitched. Uh -huh. And uh, hand stitching makes a beautiful design element. Yeah. And um, you know, sometimes you can achieve something with a with a hand stitch that you can't with a, a machine. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, is there, uh, we're kind of coming down to the last few minutes of the show. Uh, is there um, some other aspect of your work that we haven't gotten to explore yet that you want to kind of focus on for these last few minutes? And did you want her to bring the photos? Oh yeah, you know, that's, that's a good thing for reminding yeah. me. We do yeah. have uh, some images of your work. So if the control room could bring that up, we could kind of talk about some of those uh, oh, look examples. Oh, this. That would be wow. great. Yeah. So, yeah. Exciting. So let's, so, what are we talk, so let's talk about what we're looking at here. So that piece is a, is a great example of combining um, store-bought fabric with my own felt. Mm. And the, the fabric that has squiggles on it actually is the store-bought fabric. Really? Yes, me. it looks felted though. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I combined it with a piece of my own felt and made a, a jacket out of it. Yeah, okay. Let's go on to the next. Ooh. And that piece is pretty much the one you see in the back there. Yeah. Except more purple and hues. That was my, um, I was very interested in oak leaves. Right. And, uh, and with the oak leaves, is it, is it like you use it as a, something to spray around or you paint it or no, how does that it? that was uh, steamed on to oh, the wow. tannins. That's the tannin from the leaf. The oh, leaf is actually right. steamed on. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah. oh my gosh, so when we wear your garments, we're wearing leaves. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Love the natural yeah. world. So here's another piece where I combine these. This is all store-bought fabric, but I like to combine different types of fabric to create a garment. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Okay, that's really nice. And here's a piece of, um, they're both botanically printed pieces. One is printed in logwood, uh, dyed in logwood rather, the other one in pomegranate, which is the yellow color. And then their hands, the leaf outlines are hand stitched. Mm. Wow. Okay. Now look, this that's is that's pretty exciting. I, really, this I really like that. Talk that's, to us about this. Yeah. That was inspired by, um, a Queen Elizabeth collar that I saw in the Oregon Shakespeare window. 
uh, several years ago when they were doing a, a particular play. And so that became my Elizabethan collar. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. They remind me of leaves somehow. Yeah. Yes. That's another felted piece where I uh, felted it to a certain point and then inserted um, marbles into some of the felt and wrapped it and then let it dry so that when um, when you take the marbles out, you have these little nubby pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It's another piece that's botanically printed and hand dyed. All right. And these are sample pieces. When I do teach, I teach mm -hmm. natural dyeing and botanical printing. Mm -hmm. So some of these are sample pieces that came out of a workshop. Okay. Mm. And here's some of my hand stitching. There's a little piece of wood at the bottom, you see. This mm -hmm. is a little sewing pouch that I made, and that piece of wood came from my retreat in Taos. I, I like to collect uh -huh. yeah, okay. things to put into my work. Yeah. yeah. It's like a little medicine bag. Uh, some more naturally dyed fabrics. Okay. And this is kind of a sample of uh, the pieces, uh, some of the plant material that I use, and then the pieces naturally dyed, and on the bottom, they're printed. Okay, mm. all right. Mm. This piece was dyed in indigo, and then printed with leaves, but wrapped in a rust pipe. Mm. So you see all the uh, rust color yes. in there is made from a rusty pipe. <laughs> okay. It's just endless, isn't it, yeah. all the inspirations you get? And here I am working on a felted piece. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I think that completes the images from the slideshow, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's, uh, now, you know, where you're using uh, botanical, you know, materials, leaves, and so on, have you found that, there, that there's, like, certain kinds of, like, natural leaves that are, like, your favorites in terms pattern-wise that kind of, that you kind of gravitate towards? Yes, well, I love eucalyptus. Mm. There's so many different varieties mm -hmm. and they're beautiful. Oaks and maples yeah. are pretty. I've recently discovered a plant called Grevalia that makes a beautiful kind of spiky little mm. mark. So, um, and then the sumac and black walnut leaves are beautiful as well. All of those leaves are very rich in tannin and they yeah. make beautiful markings. Yeah. And the sumac turns such a bright red in the fall. Does, is that something you could use for dyes? Or? Um, I haven't tried to dye with sumac, uh -huh. but I do. Some of the leaves, like when I dye, uh, print with eucalyptus, I will keep the leaves, and you can make a eucalyptus bath out of, out wow. of them and then dye with them. Mm. I also go around uh, walking around in and uh, pick up madrone bark when it falls off the tree. And actually that piece was dyed in madrone bark. It ah. makes a beautiful brown dye. And what ah. makes this orange look? That, those, that's the eucalyptus leaf, the oh. tannin from the eucalyptus. Wow. Well, that's a fascinating process uh, that you do, that yeah. you go through. <laughs> and it just really creates some amazingly unique fashion. So, I'm really happy to have you on the show and kind of learn about this. Yeah. Now, at this point, we're about down to the last five, four or five minutes. So, uh, in general, what's like the general price range on your fashions if someone wants to buy your work? Um, anywhere between $35 for like a small pouch to um, four or $500 right. for a, a, you know, a more substantial garment. Uh, I make a lot of scarves, yeah. and they sell for around fifty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's about my average price yeah. point. Okay, and um, and how does someone go about ordering a, a fashion from you? Well, the the they would call me. Yeah, that would mm -hmm. be the best way because. <laughs> I don't have a lot of fashion for sale on my website because my pieces are one of a kind and I do sell mostly out of the Ashland Arts right. Center. So if somebody wanted a particular piece, they could contact me. Right. So your work can be seen at Ashland Arts Center. Yes. And, uh, and then you've got an official website, which yes. is? DreamweavingDesigns.com. Right. Mm. And you also have a Facebook page? 
I do. Dreamweaving Designs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And an Instagram page. Oh my At goodness. Joanne Manzone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you ever do commissions for people if they wanted a certain garment for a wedding? Or? Um, I do not like to do commissions. <laughs> I, <blame you. laughs> I get it. So, um, no, normally I don't do okay. them. Yeah. 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 But, um, so in the course of uh, a month, I mean, how many pieces are you generally creating? Well, um, if, if it's a garment, we're probably looking at um, maybe two garments a month. Okay. Scarves, All I right. can make more. Okay. Mm. Well, I just got the signal that we're kind of coming to the okay. end of the show. So I, I thank you, Joanne, for coming on. Thank you. And to explore your, your work as in fashion design. Thank you. And I thank you, Nancy, for being my guest co-host and so kind of guiding me along. Glad yeah. to be here, yeah. Okay. So we've reached the end of our show, Rogue Artisans and Crafters, and we thank you at home for joining us to, and learning about the featured artist, Joanne Manzone. We wish to thank uh, Joanne Manzone for agreeing to come on to the show to discuss her life as an artist and fashion designer. And I also wish to thank my friend and fellow RVTV producer, Nancy Bloom, for coming on to the show to help as my special guest co-host. So I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow, and we will see you next time, Road Valley. We wish to thank you for watching Rogue Artisans and Crafters. And watch this program on demand by visiting rvtv.sou.edu. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow me, David Glamour Dave Nino, online at my YouTube channel and on Facebook. If you like this show and wish to support me in my show productions at RVTV, you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash glamour dave. You can watch this show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. We want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together. Producer and host David Glamour Dave Nino is winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best New Producer and for Best Arts and Culture Show for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. 